We will talk about MPOX, why it has become so important recently, its signs and symptoms, transmission routes, and how contagious it is, as well as treatment and prevention. MPOX is a viral infection that resembles the deadly smallpox virus, though it is milder in nature. It has garnered significant attention because it has become more contagious compared to its older versions. Previously, MPOX was a localized problem in some African countries, but it has now been detected in Europe. The second reason for concern is that MPOX is more deadly compared to other common viruses. For example, it is almost 30 times more deadly than the current COVID-19 Omicron variant. Third, MPOX is closely related to the smallpox virus, which was eradicated but was once one of the deadliest diseases known to humanity. This similarity raises concerns about the potential misuse of orthopox viruses in bioterrorism, adding another layer of importance to monitoring and controlling MPOX. When a person is infected, the first symptoms usually occur around two weeks later. This is called the incubation period. One of the first signs and symptoms of MPOX is fever and headache. A skin rash is the most important characteristic of MPOX, typically beginning one to three days after the onset of fever. It starts as flat, red spots that evolve into raised bumps, then fluid-filled blisters, vesicles, and finally pustules before scabbing over. The rash often begins on the face and spreads to other parts of the body, including the palms, soles, and mucous membranes. The lesions can be painful and cause significant discomfort. In some cases, lesions in the mouth or genitals can develop into painful ulcers. The rash progresses over two to four weeks from flat lesions to scabs that eventually fall off. The rash occurs all at once and is more painful. In contrast, chicken pox is typically more itchy than painful. Also, while chicken pox rash starts on the trunk and spreads to the limbs, the mpox rash occurs everywhere at once. In chicken pox, you can see skin rashes in different stages, such as pustules, vesicles, and papules, but in the case of mpox, the rash is in the same stage because it occurs all at once. Most cases of mpox will resolve without treatment. But why is it so deadly? A common cause of death from mpox is that these skin lesions can become infected by bacteria, leading to sepsis. Respiratory distress and, in some cases, encephalitis are also possible. The death rate of mpox is around 3.2%. Swelling of the lymph nodes is a distinctive feature of mpox and helps differentiate it from other similar diseases like chickenpox. We should mention that a significant percentage of deaths could potentially be avoided with timely medical intervention, proper management of symptoms, and prevention of secondary infections. A person becomes contagious after the first day of symptoms and remains contagious until all sores have scabbed over and a new layer of skin has formed, which is around for weeks after the first symptoms. Mpox is caused by the Mpox virus. It is closely related to smallpox because they belong to the same virus family. This is why some of the symptoms and the disease course are similar. However, Mpox is generally less severe than smallpox. Mpox is usually spread through close contact, such as sexual contact or direct contact with infected skin. It is possible for it to spread via respiratory droplets, but this is less common because closer and more prolonged contact is required for transmission. Around 95% of cases spread through close contact. 17,000 suspected or confirmed cases have been reported in at least 12 countries, with more than 500 deaths already. This new variant is called Clade 1b, first described in 2023, while Mpox was first identified in monkeys in 1958 in Denmark. Clade 1b is known for causing more severe illness compared to Clade 2, which was responsible for the 2022 global outbreak and is a milder variant. The majority of Mpox cases, more than 90%, have been described in Congo, but it is also common in other countries. It has also spread in Kenya, Rwanda, and Uganda. New cases have been detected in Pakistan and Sweden, 
indicating that Mpox is spreading around the world and has already reached epidemic levels. Currently, there is no specific treatment for Mpox. However, supportive care is the primary approach. Pain management with analgesics such as acetaminophen and ibuprofen, adequate fluid intake to prevent dehydration, and keeping the skin clean and dry are important. Applying antiseptic creams and ointments helps prevent secondary bacterial infections. Zinc oxide creams are commonly used for their soothing and protective properties. They create a barrier that helps protect the skin from irritation and infection. Iodine-based creams and chlorhexidine cream are also commonly used because of their antimicrobial properties. Petrolatum, Vaseline, plain petrolatum can be used to keep lesions moist and prevent them from cracking, which reduces pain and the risk of secondary infection. Among antibiotic creams, mupiracin and bacitracin are highly effective in preventing secondary bacterial infections. Oral cephalexin is a commonly prescribed antibiotic for skin infections, especially in cases of cellulitis or impetigo, which can occur as secondary bacterial infections in Mpox lesions. Clindamycin is used for more severe or resistant cases, particularly when there is concern for methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA. In severe cases or in high-risk individuals, such as those with weakened immune systems, the antiviral drug Tecovirimat, POX, initially developed for smallpox, may be used under compassionate use protocols or emergency use authorizations, as it has shown efficacy against orthopox viruses. For prevention, the smallpox vaccine has been shown to be effective in preventing Mpox due to the close relationship between the viruses. It can be used as pre-exposure prophylaxis, PrEP for individuals at high risk of exposure, such as healthcare workers or those in close contact with infected individuals. Post-exposure prophylaxis, PEP administered within four days of exposure to prevent disease onset, and within 14 days to reduce the severity of symptoms.